Oh yeah, Man United beat Leeds 5-1 in the opening day fixture of the Premier League. A result that I think I was surprised by. The performance probably not so much because I think if ever there was a perfect team for United to play on the opening day of the Premier League would be Leeds. As much as great as they are for their intensity and their counter-attacking play and their one-two touching passes when it comes to defending because they kind of basically do you know they basically mark one-on-one -on -one all over the pitch it then requires it then obviously offers opportunity for you to create spaces if you're able to get people to run off the off their men you're able to play balls inside of space you can clearly quick quickly open up the entire pitch and if you watch the game itself you'd see there was loads of pitch to for players to run into a good example being mason green was finished where Paul Popper picks up the ball in the halfway line bends it on the inside of their right back or left back and then Mason Greenwood runs into it and hits it um across the goalkeeper and into the bottom corner and that was a great example of just how much space there was in the game because against another team where they might you know have a few more bodies behind the ball um or it's in front of the ball in front of our position in front of us as we're playing it's very unlikely you're going to create those kind of spaces so all in all very good performance obviously Paul Popper being able to get four you know assist even though Graham Sooners didn't think it was worthy of praise because he's a 100 million pound player which he isn't 89 million but you know details don't matter when it comes to those kind of guys I still feel like you know they needed to get a performance like that under their belt just to get the wheels turning especially when you consider all the other teams in the top four one as well especially some of the big title contenders so you need to start off strong you need to start off with intent you need to kind of sort of semi send a signal but not really but still just show remind people that what your time you're on specifically and i think we did that with that performance all in um so very impressed with that standout thing obviously pogba's performance was incredible um lindelof played really awesome as well i think that is definitely feel like it's a reaction to the Rafael Varane situation because if there's one thing we know about football players or about anybody that puts themselves on a sort of public you know who offers themselves up to the public in terms of how they earn a living whether an entertainer or an artist usually the best ones have some element of um, a delusional sense of self right they usually think way more highly of themselves than others because you need that right you need that kind of um self-determination self actualization that belief system ingrained in you in order for you to condition yourself to all the blows and the knockbacks and the insults and the criticisms you're going to get along the way from people who don't exactly believe in the way you do the people who don't believe in the way you believe in yourself right you need to be like that so sometimes i think people that criticize people that are a bit too arrogant or whatever maybe in those kind of fields i think it's a little bit over the board because i don't think there's a way to exist living a life in the public eye without having some level of delusion you need it in order to kind of keep you strong and keep you going so with that said it wouldn't surprise me if somebody like a victor lindelof deep down when he saw the news of us being linked to referral of and then obviously the deal being concluded he was thinking now nah, i'm not the what makes you think i'm gonna be the one that's gonna get taken out of the team why doesn't Maguire get taken out of the team or somebody else or they change the entire formation yeah i mean he's probably so assured or so kind of sure of himself that he thinks no 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 i'm not actually the weak link in this team the weak link is a b c or d do you know what i mean it wouldn't surprise me because we already seen what happened allegedly there's a story going out there that supposedly referee around wanted obviously number four, the number that he had at Real Madrid, the number that he's not necessarily linked to. And obviously at United, the person occupying number four is Phil Jones, a player who's been, you know, beset by injuries and poor form and just hasn't got his United career started at all. I think he might have been the last Sarah's Ferguson signing as well. So he'd been at the club for a long time. We haven't been incapable of moving him on because he's always injured. So no one wants to buy him. And of course he earns all the money. So it's hard to have clubs to sign him. And allegedly, sorry about that, the story is that um, he refused to give up his number four to Rafa Varane. That's allegedly the story. So Rafa wanted the number four, Phil Jones refused to give it. Which makes you think, why would somebody that's you know perpetually injured never plays when he isn't injured and quite clearly isn't good enough for to play for United week in, week out? Why wouldn't he 
feel like this would be the perfect time to maybe you know hand over the baton and go somewhere else because deep down he feels like he's still the guy he still feels like he's one of the best center backs at the club which again shows you the delusion that some people have but you again you need to have it in order because you know if you're phil jones you have to be delusional to still be a professional football player because everybody and their mum keeps telling you that you're a waste of space so the only way to get yourself motivated to get yourself ready to perform at that level is to keep telling yourself that you are you know one of england's best center backs and you're going to prove everybody wrong and everybody think he's going to take your place but you're actually going to take his it's flipping crazy so it's quite cool to see bit lindorf performing the way he did obviously against against leeds it's the first game of the season more often than not the thing with luke you know the thing the same thing goes with luke shaw for all the hype they get for individual games or spurts of good form if you're actually united fan you know how um you know how much they fly to deceive how often they turn in mediocre performances and get away with it because there's no one really to challenge their position so the one thing you would hope is that if they do start to falter that Oli would have the guts to change them even if they have played six games prior that were good if they play two games that are terrible or three or four they need to have the courage to be able to change them for the quality we have on the bench and hopefully now there's no excuses because that's the one thing as well that i would and, and uh, one on the list of things that i think you'd criticize ollie for is his lack of kind of rotation he doesn't necessarily trust his squad and i don't think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he doesn't think the players are good enough i just don't think you trust his squad outside the first team um i don't think you could sign enough players for him to play yeah i don't think he just will he's just not that kind of manager everyone's got their different sort of profile and i think so far he's proved to us over the years that he doesn't necessarily like rotating his side too often which is odd too when you consider that he was a perpetual sub but regardless um it'll be nice to see that change but um fluid attack midfield looked pretty stable interesting that as soon as Puck Bobble went off the team kind of flattered to deceive there wasn't a lot of kind of um interplay and you know uh you know link play and whatever communication it just felt a little bit flat whenever pop up one of the pitch that's interesting to note so we definitely have to work out a solution for a sub or somebody that would probably fit that mold if it makes sense i don't know you know what i mean so that was interesting um obviously greenwood finishing ability is still up there um bruno fernandez of course finishing ability we already know about that but if anything i would like to see if, if possible i know it's not going to happen but I would also like to see an evolution in Bruno Fernandes' game. We all know he can score goals. We all know he's clinical in front of goal. We all know his shooting ability is second to none. He's probably only behind Son in his ability to always kind of hit the target or make the keeper work, right, in that regard. So he's really, really good. But I would also like to see an evolution in his play where he's able to play as a conventional midfielder more so and able to kind of fill in the holes in the midfield if need be because he goes wandering too much and starts playing up front basically all these goals were basically striker goals but i'd like him to see him play a little bit more like a conventional number eight um number 10 and actually sit in that midfield and um dictate play that way or influence play that way that would be great to see if possible uh fred got on the score sheet as well that's when you know we're on the mad one when fred scores he again played decently another good illustration of just how weird this team is in the middle i think mctominay and fred are both kind of half dms right together they're still not a full dm so you definitely still need a sitting you know combative athletic you know the defensive midfielder who can play a position again i don't think you need somebody that great with the ball i think even an ndd would do the, the job really well because then you could just pass the ball onto the person next to him and then get that person to kind of you know uh move the ball further up the pitch but i think if we were able to have a real commanding defensive midfielder alongside a fred or a mctominay in the center i think that team the whole makeup of it will completely change it would free up the wing backs to push up further forward it would give center backs a bit of extra protection like i think that would be a really really good way to play but you know it looks like Oli social doesn't really think that we need a dm because we've never been linked to one seriously apart from declan rice's and sound he goes if you can him as a dm which i don't really count him as a dm i think even more as a box to box midfielder but still um decent performance um again nothing to get super overly excited about only the first game of the season we didn't win nothing um but still good to beat your local rivals 5-1 at home especially with the fans in the pitch especially considering all the hullabaloo's that happened outside of the stadium before the game it was definitely good to shut those guys up so yeah 5-1 can we play you guys every week 5-1 can we play you guys every week